Everything About Kurdistan is an unbiased organization striving for the unity of Kurdistan. Everything About Kurdistan is not taking side to any party, ideology, leader or clan. We strictly stand behind a united Kurdistan and please when you comment down below keep that in mind that we don't need any more conflicts between each other. This documentary is about the demonstrations in modern time aimed towards the KRG administration between 2003 and 2020. If you want to see a historical documentary about demonstrations before KRG by Kurds against the Iraqi regime let me know in the comment section below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video by looking at some background information before getting into the subject itself. The Kurdistan region was officially formed after the 1991 Gulf War when Saddam Hussein attacked the US ally Kuwait. Saddam, who before the invasion of Kuwait was backed by the United States, stopped receiving support from America and as a response countries like US and France supported a no-fly zone over Iraqi occupied Kurdistan giving the Kurds space to build up what we know today as KRG the Kurdistan regional government. The first election of the region was held in 1992 where KDP Kurdistan Democratic Party secured its victory with 45.3 percent of the votes. The upcoming two years the PUK and KDP did a lot in order to form a common cabinet for the Kurdish region but were unsuccessful in 1994 the PUK and KDP broke out in clashes starting the first Kurdish civil war as PUK captured towns of Shaklawa and Shamshamal from KDP. In 1996, the PUK party led by Jalal Talabani controlled the larger part of southern Kurdistan, including the capital city of Hawler, while Barzani loyal forces controlled the western parts, including Duhok. In an argument of money share from the smuggling routes between Bashur and Turkey, Talabani established an alliance with Iran where a military operation against KDPY in Bashur, the main Kurdish enemy of Iran, would be allowed. In response to this agreement, Barzani asked for reinforcements from Saddam Hussein and Iraq. The two acts by Talabani and Barzani awoke anger among the Kurdish people. The act of looking for support from Kurd killers in order to fight each other was a really low blow. The Iraqi Ba'ath regime saw a great opportunity to retake control over northern Iraq which they lost after the 1991 Gulf crisis. Saddam Hussein accepted Barzani's proposal. 31st of August, 30,000 Iraqi troops attacked the PUK-held city of Hawler, which was defended by 3,000 PUK Peshmerga, led by Qusrat Rasul Ali. It is known that 700 PUK Peshmerga was executed by Iraq in a field outside the city as the rest of Peshmerga retreated towards Sleimani and the border of Iran. The Kurds feared another genocide from Saddam Hussein towards the Kurds just like what they had experienced in 1988 and 1991. The American Clinton administration however was unwilling to allow Saddam Hussein to regain control of Iraqi Kurdistan forcing the Iraqi army to retreat back to Baghdad. In the Washington agreement one year later the PUK and KDP signed a peace treaty more or less forced upon them by the American government. The final result of the civil war resulted in KDP influence in everything from Duhok to the capital of Hawaii while PUK and the opposition influenced everything from Sleimani to Halabja. For the upcoming years the Kurdistan region would flourish as other parts of Iraq was haunted under constant war. When Saddam Hussein was toppled in 2003, negotiations started mainly led by Jalal Talabani to put conditions for the KRG region in the new Iraqi constitution. The Kurdish region was after the negotiations entitled to 17% of the Iraqi federal budget. 
In the negotiations, it was also decided that the Iraqi president always would be Kurdish. And in a verbal agreement between Jalal Talabani and Masoud Barzani, the Iraqi presidentship would always be represented by a PUK member, while the Kurdistan region always would be represented by a KDP member. A few years later, the civil war in Iraq had gone so far, resulting in heavy success for the Islamic State on the ground. The terrorist organization which everybody feared waged a war against all parts in the area, including the KRG region and the Iraqi government. Internal problems like corruption and poverty was clear before the war against ISIS, but it became even more clear now as the Kurdistan region suffered economically due to the war against ISIS. ISIS. This went on even after the Peshmerga capture of the oil-rich city of Kirkuk in the early period of the ISIS war. The economic situation was improved slightly, but people still complained since it was very clear, at least according to the opposition, that a lot of money were hidden in corrupt politicians' private interests. The city of Sleimani, which evolved into the centrum of opposition, had several occasions of protesting civilians against months of unpaid salary, corruption and lack of freedom of expression, not at least when journalists criticizing the government and its leader was killed for their work, the most famous and iconic being Zardesht Osman. Now, while the KRG administration officially condemned the killing, most Kurds in the opposition saw through this and was sure that they had ordered the killing. The killing of Zerdesht Osman sparked a big wave of journalists, students, intellectuals and activists demonstrating and demanding an independent investigation and those held responsible arrested. About a year later, the demonstrations were back inspired by the Arab Spring and the movement of change. In Sleimani, about 3,000 people gathered to protest against corruption, nepotism and social injustice, but the demonstration also spread to other cities and villages of Kurdistan. The demonstrations turned violent as a group of protesters attacked the KDP headquarters. As a response to security forces shooting towards the crowd, killing two people and injuring 47. After the first week, demonstrations reached around 7,000 people. Totally, around 18 people died when the demonstrations calmed down again. The criticism from the Kurdish people towards the KRG administration was not the only type of critic they received. Later on, around 2016, the Iraqi government also criticized the KRG region for selling the Kirkuk oil illegally. 
This eventually led to a dispute between KRG and Baghdad, in which Baghdad stripped the 17% budget deal firstly to 12% and later on dropping it completely for a couple of months, stripping KRG from an amount of money that used to cover almost 80% of KRG's yearly income. Several waves of protests started in 2016 and the city of Slemani once again became the centrum of opposition against the administration of KRG. However, the protests would soon fall under the shadow of ISIS who took most of the attention during the upcoming years. The background of this 2016 demonstration were pretty much the same as before, but now people also demonstrated against the clear cooperation between Turkey and the ruling Kurdish party, KDP, where the Turkish state was allowed to build military bases in the Kurdistan region as well as bombing the PKK time after another without KRG being able to say anything about it. In the beginning of 2020, the effects of the COVID-19 situation made the people of Kurdistan go out on streets and protest against the political leadership and their lack of ability to fix the poverty, corruption, high unemployment rate and lack of public services. The people were also complaining about the political diplomacy with the Turkish state. These problems has surely been created as a result of war, budget crisis with Baghdad and neopotism. The first demonstration started in the 2nd of December 2020. The first group going out on the streets were mostly teachers but also employees who stood up against not getting paid for salaries in several months. Three days later in Pira Magrun, located northwest of Slemani, people blocked the road between the two locations. 6th of December, the people of Pira Magrun invaded a PUK building which they set fire on. An attempt to invade the KDP building was also made but failed in the end. In the village of Bazian, between the road from Slemani to Kirkuk, demonstrators also blocked the road, making it hard for people and not at least the Kurdish security forces to pass through. 17th of December, Kurdish security forces raided the NRT headquarter channel, closing down the channel because of their positive stand to the demonstrations and their will to air it live. The same day, the KDP local government building was set on fire in the city of Said Sadiq. The protest also found its way to Cham Chamal, where one protester was killed and three injured after that protesters had blocked the road between Slemani and Kirkuk, and another two people were killed in the cities of Kifri and Darbendi Khan. The following day, 8th of December, the protests had spread its way into cities and villages like Rania, Penjuen, Kalar, Bazian, Takia, Arbat, Dukan, Khurmal, Halabja, Hajiwa, and Shaharzur. Only in Said, Sadiq, and Takia, that day, 20 people was injured and 3 killed as the result of clashes between protesters and security forces. In the village of Penjuen, the first KDP member was killed off the clashes between KDP and the protesters. In the district of Halabja, the protesters kept on by setting fire on the police station and the mayor's house, making it all look more and more like a riot rather than a simple demonstration. 9th of December, Kurdish security forces imposed an 48-hour curfew in the Sleimani region. However, the protesters broke the curfew. On this day, another police station was burned to the ground in Piramagrun and in Chamchamal the Goran movement building was destroyed. In Dukan, north of Slemani, a Peshmerga died of a stroke while trying to disperse protesters blocking the Dukan Slemani road. The very next day, 10th of December, another protester death was reported, bringing the number up to 9 deaths in the recent Kurdistan demonstrations. 11th of December, the demonstrations were heavily opposed by the KRG administration as many many demonstrators were arrested. This would become the last day of the demonstrations as the next day, 12th of December, no demonstrations were reported in the KRG region. 18th of December, several sources claimed that the KRG region had made a deal with the Baghdad government for a new budget agreement. 
However, none of the parts has yet released any details about the agreement made between the KRG region and the Baghdad government. I really hope you liked this video and if you did, leave a like down below, comment your opinion and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give us the support that we need and that you don't miss any further videos on this channel.